It is enormously beyond a common event in the faking USA to portray the current plethora of manifestations of arrogant, predatory abusiveness as if they are primarily the result of the perverse inclinations of the sick mind of Donald Trump. This portrayal of the current debauchery is a favorite meme of the majority of people who believe that they possess a superior belief system through which they ardently cling to a devotion to the long-standing status quo of delusional bipartisanship wherein they refuse to see the truth about their roles in helping to create the very abusiveness which they claim to find personally repugnant. The truth is that the despicable nature of the Trump presidency is very much a distillation of the very same intoxicant which has been central to the history of the faking USA. Key component of this presidency is the same as that which has been inseparable from at least the majority of his predecessors. The main difference which is disgustingly and unavoidably central to Trump's presidency is his vain, brutishly honest expression of his, and most presidents before him, lack of integrity between his words used to get elected and his actions after being elected. This slimy method of misrepresentation is made uniquely Trumpian by the crudeness of his interpretation, but his rudely indifferent wording is, perversely, a more honest expression of what is the long-established method of operations within the global corporatum known as the USA, it is not that the faking of the so-called USA is exceptional or unique in its craven pompousness and greed when compared with the history of human-created nations, but the scale of its brutishness and the rapidity of the infectiousness its current corporate insidiousness is clearly a culmination of a very common human method of operating. Trump is also a culmination of the bipartisan Democrat-Republican shared ideology which depends upon delusions and predations. His abusive behavior has grown out of the efforts of all of his most recent predecessors in the White House. They have all insisted that the Congress is merely a tolerated advisory agency and they have insisted that the President should pick and choose which congressional actions, laws, they deem are worth implementing under their reign. The Congress may gripe and moan, but they too believe in the President being above the law. This is why they refuse to be limited by the duties assigned by the now former Constitution of the United States of America. The clearest example of their malfeasance is their abdication of their assigned duty to declare war and how they insist that the President cannot be limited in creating wars for their corporate owners. Here are a few of the most salient current examples of the insidious, vicious corruption which the so-called government of the USA has pumped up and pressed against the lives of its victims and which it loves to pretend are the result of the crassness of Trump, as Trump is indeed a participating agent of the insidious, vicious corruption. Trump's destruction of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action JCPOA, otherwise known as the Iran Deal, which was designed by the Obama administration as a trap through which Iran could be monitored and subjected to greater sanctions, punishments based upon the willful manipulations and accusations of any of the signatories to the deal. Iran has never been a nuclear threat to anyone, other than through the use of nuclear-derived energy, which would also make numerous other nations such as France, Germany, Russia, and the faking USA major threats to the people of the world. Iran has never had or used nuclear weapons, but the Obama bots and their Republican allies insist that Iran is an imminent threat. Their deal was designed to continue to make sure that corporate capitalists could destroy the paltry remnants of the democratic socialism which once existed in Iran and which was crushed by the faking USA in 1953 for the benefit of private corporate profits. The faking USA and its allies, a school of shark-like predators, will never forgive the Iranian people for demanding a release from the tyrannical Shah of privatized corporate capitalism. Trump is as Shah-like as they come and he is typically the smarmy US government agents of private profits. His destruction of the unjustified trap set by Obama is part of the design of that trap. 
Those who are appalled by Trump's destroying of the JCPOA are also reinforcing the bipartisan lie that Iran is a source of nuclear weapons. Iran has repeatedly and regularly been on the receiving end of unanimously bipartisan-supported laws which have been designed to do what Trump is doing. The Iranian people removed a corporate tyrant from control over them and the faking USA will not allow such treatment of one of their pet projects to go unpunished. This is also one of the major achievements of the collusion of the Obama and George W. Bush administrations. The deviously obfuscating pseudo-legalese which was central to the Bush administration's use of horrifying torture and lies for corporate plunder and the promotion of warmongering for private profits was protected from examination by the Obama administration under their sleazy insistence that people must look forward and their adamant refusal to reflect and examine the blatant criminality of which Gina Haspel was a active participant. Her sadistic abusiveness was protected by Obama and it is now being rewarded. Her nomination is not an aberration as much as it is a culmination. She represents the bipartisan belief system and she is where she is because of people who cling to the Democrats and the Republicans as if both parties do not see her previous actions as honorable. Sure, some Democrats may protest against her, but that ignores the fact that they also celebrate their association with the Obama administration which shielded her and those who proudly promoted torture and murder like her from any limitations on their careers. This project has been underway for decades and it has repeatedly been overwhelmingly endorsed by Democrats and Republicans in the Congress. After the passage of the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995, the great carpetbagger presidents Clinton, Bush and Obama allowed the implementation to be repeatedly waived every six months, supposedly due to concerns about national security and their insistence that the president should be above congressional lawmaking. They did not oppose the Israeli domination of Jerusalem. They simply wanted to wait until it could be instituted with less blowback and when it was an example of presidential dominance over congressional lawmaking. The subservient Congress had deliberately given them this option. The delaying of the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem has had a negative effect on the budget of the State Department because 50% of the building and maintenance money for the department has been withheld over the years because of Section 3B of the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995. With Trump's indifference to any possible damage to national security which might arise because of his groundbreaking culmination of overwhelmingly bipartisan congressional desires to let the U.S. stop mincing about, he is following in the footsteps of Harry Truman's rush to impose Israeli domination over and their indifference to the lives of Palestinians. All of this is supposedly justified by biblical warmongering and the desires of King David thousands of years ago, but it really seems to have more to do with a growing contemporary desire for more militarized economic hell. The faking USA is the most widespread purveyor of the religiosity of economic torture the planet has ever seen and the vain claims of exceptionality which it loudly touts are epitomized by Donald Trump. It is possible however that a Pence presidency could raise the corrupt religiosity to an even greater level of toxicity. There is little reason to doubt that the congressional arms of this cyclops will find a way to make it so.